Okay, so tonight we're making carne guisada. It's uh, basically, it's Spanish guisada just means stew. So this is basically a Mexican beef stew or Tex-Mex beef stew. I'm not sure which one is which. I'm sure some of the folks out there be glad to help me out and tell me which one it is. And, but I'm sure there's variations depending on if you're in Texas or if you're in different areas of Mexico. So anyway, I've got my pan heating up here. And while that oil is getting hot, I want to show you what I've got here. I've got two pounds of uh, chuck roast that I have cut up. As you can see, it's got some uh, marbling in the meat, which is a good thing. That's going to help it because we're going to cook this nice and slow. And that fat's going to render out of there and it's going to make a nice, wonderful dish. So anyway, let's smear this oil around, swirl it around, I guess would be a better term. Smear doesn't sound so good. What we're going to do is we're going to brown this meat and I'm probably going to do this in two batches because I mean let's face it two pounds of cold meat going into a pan uh, that would start stewing before I put some color on it and that's not what I want to do I want to put some color on here now I've tried to cut it up into mostly big bigger pieces but now some of the pieces because of when I was cutting out sinew and stuff it, they are smaller which is fine too um, that'll help give us different contrasting textures and such. So anyway, let me brown this meat up. I'll be back. Okay, so, so most of my meat has browned up. It's just about done with this second batch. As you can see, the pan's pretty hot. Let me talk about what I've got as far as veggie, veggies that are getting ready to go in here. I've got half of a large onion that I've cut up. I've got two Roma tomatoes that I've cut up, two jalapeno that I've cut up, and four cloves of barley. Anyway, that's all ready to go in. Let's go ahead and take this meat out. We're not really cooking that in here. We're just kind of putting some color on it. And we're about ready to go to the next step. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna put just a little bit more oil in this pan. And it's gotten kind of dry, and that's not what we want. What we're gonna do, we're basically just gonna put all this in there. Including the garlic, jalapeno, There we go. Kind of soften this up a little bit. Get some moisture coming out of it. Help that. We're going to go ahead and put our herbs in here. Our salt is really what we want to get in there. I've got some salt, black pepper, Mexican oregano, cumin, and a bay leaf. Now, for the amounts, how much I got, if you look down below the window box here, you'll see show more. And I have all the amounts listed there. Now, it looks like I want to put some water in here. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe not. Got some liquid coming out of here. Now all that stuff that's stuck to the bottom, that's coming off. Oh man, the smell coming off of here. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to put our meat in here on top of this mixture. And we're going to cover this and we're going to let it simmer. And this is going to simmer for about a total of, of at least an hour and a half. But if I can stand to go longer, I will. But I mean, it, it is the mid, middle of the week and I'm cooking. So I doubt I go four or five, six hours, maybe an hour and a half or two hours. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, so we had, we're about 10 minutes into this cook. I'm going to turn this heat up just a little bit. See, notice how I got all this liquid that come out? So, so far I haven't added any liquid to this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep coming by about every 15 minutes or so and checking to see if I need to add liquid. Uh, hopefully I don't, but I mean if I need to, and I, and I really think later on I probably will. Uh, I've got some beef stock standing by if I need, if I need some liquid. Uh, you could always just use plain water, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can use chicken stock. Anyway, 
I'm gonna cover this back up and let it keep cooking. Now, as you can see, I'm using a real fancy lid. I don't have a lid for this thing, so I'm just using this little flat Kamal thing. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, so now this has been simmering for a little bit over two hours. And this meat's starting to get really tender, just like I want it. But it's already getting pretty late. I kind of started cooking a little later than I had intended on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off, let it cool down a little bit, let it keep kind of simmering a little bit, and I'm gonna put it in the fridge and we're gonna finish this off tomorrow. Besides, I don't have any tortillas. I looked around, I don't have any. It's raining outside, and I don't feel like going to the store and getting tortillas in the rain. Anyway, hopefully I have some tortillas tomorrow, and we'll finish this up and eat it tomorrow night. Okay, so here it is, second night. Uh, you know, this uh, my carne guisada has been in the refrigerator overnight. Hard not to dig into that last night, but it wasn't quite finished. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna turn this burner on and we're gonna bring this back up to temperature. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna throw in about a handful of uh, cilantro. And when we finish this up, we're gonna cook this cilantro down. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, so this is good and hot. As you can see, most of my liquid is gone out of here. Now, if you want a little bit more sauce, put some more uh, stock in here or some water. Uh, at this point, I would probably stick to something like using beef stock. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plate this up. Take that off that hot burner. And I'm gonna move this plate over here to the side and finish garnishing or plating this up. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down a whole bunch of pico de gallo. Because I happen to like it. Got some avocado slices I'm gonna put on here. There we go. I'll make those a little bit neater because that's kind of sloppy looking, isn't it? There we go. That looks a lot better now, doesn't it? Okay, so let's give this a try. First, I want them to see how tender it is. Okay, it's not fall apart tender by any means. There we go. So it definitely, I could have cooked it a little longer, but uh, let's see how it tastes. Mm. It's definitely not overspiced. I could probably use just a little bit more salt, maybe a little bit more cumin, a little bit more oregano, but this is a good base where you could start from. From here you could season it more, make more gravy. Anyway, I like it and I'm going to enjoy my dinner and I hope you enjoyed the video.